Hello everybody, my name is Chloe Joswell and today I'm going to talk about my research on the analysis of water models through molecular dynamics. This research is also performed by Matthew Broadbent and Dr. Matthew Neen. So to begin, I'm going to explain what atmospheric aerosols are and how they're formed. So aerosols are either particles in the liquid or solid phase and they are suspended in the air in the gas phase. These reactions of sulfur and nitrogen compounds with aerosols and water droplets are found almost everywhere in the atmosphere. These reactions begin at the first interaction, which is at the surface of a water droplet or aerosol. It's important to gain a better understanding of these reactions to identify their contribution to pollution and the greenhouse effect. Um, this diagram down here below shows um, compounds reacting with either aerosols or water droplets, um, and as the reactions continue, the atmospheric aerosols continue to grow. So. Um, one way that we can better understand these reactions is through MD simulations. Um, MD simulations can help because they can help model the transport and kinetics of atmospheric aerosols. Um, here is a model of how MD simulations work. Uh, the general idea is that you're going to start with a model, and then you're going to define an initial set of values, and then you're going to define the force field. And the force field is a collection of equations and constants designed to reproduce uh, molecular geometry and certain properties of the structure. And then after that, it's going to calculate um, the forces on each individual atom, and then it's going to increase the time. And then after a certain amount of picoseconds, the simulation is going to end, and then it's going to analyze the data. And what's really important here is the output results. And um, the output results is what we can use to help better understand these reactions. So one other thing that is really helpful the, um, is VMD. Um, and VMD just helps visualize what the simulation looks like when it's happening. So as you can see here, um, this uh, this is just a screenshot of um, a simulation, and it just shows the atoms at various points in, uh, in time. So the red signifies the beginning of the simulation, and then the white signifies the middle of the simulation, and then blue shows the end of the simulation, so where the uh, atom... Um, was last place when the simulation ended. So three very important things that we need to consider when doing MD is um, the force field, water model, and ensemble being used. So for our purposes, the two ensembles that are taken into account are the NPT and NVT ensemble. So the only really big difference between these two is that one is constant pressure and one is constant volume. Um, aside from that, both are, um, ha hold a constant number of molecules and also a constant temperature. Since we're doing, um, we're taking into account ensemble, we also need to take into account the thermostat being used. So for NVT ense uh, an NVT ensemble, we're going to use a Nose Hoover thermostat. And then for a NPT ensemble, we're going to use the Brenzdeen thermostat. And um, these thermostats are needed to heat the simulation up to a given temperature, and then after that, the simulation is going to run for X amount of picoseconds at that constant temperature. So, um, another thing to take into account is the force fields, um, force fields direct interactions between atoms. And to build off of that, we also need to take into account water models. And what water models really are, are just a variation of the force field that we define. So there are numerous water models out there, and that's just because there's no one perfect water model. Typically, each model um, is developed to fit well to only a few set of parameters. So one other thing we need to take in to understand is viscosity. And viscosity is a measure of its resistance to deformation. Um, according to experimental data, viscosity should decrease as the temperature of water increases. And this is important because... Um, when we're choosing our ensemble force field and water model, we need to make sure that it will produce a simulation with viscosity that's similar to the experimental data. And this is important because when we're modeling atmospheric aerosols, it's important to take into account that the first interaction is at the surface of a water droplet or aerosol. So to calculate, um, to set up our simulations, um, we're going to begin with 128 molecules. And then for each MD simulation, the box length is determined because the simulation is just a box. So um, the box length is dependent upon three different things. The number of molecules, the density at a given temperature of the substance, and the mass. So for water, the box length is um, typically around 15 angstroms. 
And then what's also important here is that we use periodic boundary conditions. Um, and to think about this, uh, think Pac-Man. So if a particle moves outside the box, it will reappear at exactly the same place on the other side of the box. Um, another important thing we need to take into account is how to calculate the viscosity. So one of the output results from simulating an MD is the mean square displacement as a function of time. And when we plot that, um, we get a slope, and we can use that slope to calculate the viscosity. And this is also known as the self-diffusion coefficient, which can also be expressed using the Einstein relation, um, as shown here. And then using the self-diffusion coefficient um, from the slope, we can then calculate the viscosity using this relation, the Stokes-Einstein relation, um, at a given temperature. So um, we began with two different um, compounds. The first one was hexane, and as you can see here, we found uh, the mean square displacement versus time at a given function, and then we used the slope to calculate the viscosity at a given temperature, and then we continued to calculate these at different temperatures and plotted them down here. And as you can see, viscosity decreases as, as temperature increases, which um, should be the case according to experimental data. And then we also did the same for heptane. We did the mean square displacement, and then we used the slope to calculate the viscosity, um, and then plotted it for different temperatures. And as you can see, it also decreases as a function of temperature, which is, should be the case as well. So onto the main purpose, we used three different water models. Um, we used the TIP3P, the POL3, and the SPC slash E water model. So the TIP3P is just the default water model for molecular dynamics. Um, the POL3 water model we used because previous experimental data stated that the diffusion coefficient has a 48% deviation from experimental values, um, which is much less than many other water models. Um, the third one we used was the SPC slash E water model, and um, that's because previous experimental data suggests um, the model provided the best diffusion coefficient out of a few different water models it compared in the research. So as you can see here, here are the simulation results, and then here's the experimental data. Um, uh, these graphs are a little bit noisy, but you can tell that the SPC slash E and POL3 model um, viscosity decreased as temperature increased, which should be the case compared to the, viscos the experimental viscosity. And these simulations were run using the um, constant pressure ensemble. Um, the only problem here, though, is that uh, the viscosity values are off by a factor of 10. And we're working on figuring out why that's the case. But um, the third water model that we simulated was TIP3P. And as you can see here, the viscosity is, um, for some reason, increasing as temperature is increasing, which should not be the case. And we're working on trying to figure out why this is the case, but this may suggest that the TIP3P water model is not the um, right one to use. So conclusions from this research. Um, when using MD, it's important to choose the force field water model ensemble carefully, especially for um, this research. Um, we really need to take into account the viscosity. And then once we find an accurate water model for viscosity, it will help us better model the transport and kinetics of atmospheric aerosols. And this will help us um, better understand these reactions and help us um, identify how they contribute to pollution and the greenhouse effect. Um, I'd like to thank the United States Department of Agriculture to, that funded this research. And then I would also like to thank you for taking your time out of this day to watch my research and presentation. And this concludes it. Thank you.